What was Cecilia like as a mother? In all honesty, I felt really bad for her children. More so her son than her daughter. When I first met Cecilia, she only had her son with her who was, I think, about five years old at the time. And uh, he was the cutest little boy. He could only speak Afrikaans. So it was, at that point, somewhat hard for me to relate to him uh, when I spoke to him and when he wanted to talk to me because I couldn't understand a word of what he was saying. Um, but at least as time went on, between the two of us, he started to learn English and my Afrikaans developed quite substantially. Um, I became quite very fluent actually in Afrikaans um, not just because of her son but because of Cecilia and Ria and everyone I was surrounded by at that point was Afrikaans and they spoke it a lot so I understood pretty much 98% of everything that was being said and uh, but with Cecilia's son she, she didn't have the time of day for him. She had no patience for him. Cecilia was forever chasing him away from her, forever shouting at him, forever ridiculing him, mocking him. I had seen this little boy cry so many times for such stupid things that Cecilia would say to him. Such ridiculous things that she would say to him. He was only a child. And for the four years that I knew him, this carried on. She didn't want this little boy near her. Um, she even went as far as saying that it wasn't her son. That um, little Andres was actually Akisha's son. Uh, her D.I.D. part. It was... So it wasn't Cecilia's son, it was Akisha's son. So I suppose in uh, though saying that, it was, I suppose, her way of trying to justify, ridiculously justify, why she would treat him so badly. I mean, he constantly wanted to be around his mother, have her attention, have her approval, like any child would. And she didn't give him any dot of that. And uh, since day one with this little boy, he just wanted my attention from day one. I, I didn't even approach him. I didn't initiate any interaction with him. I mean, first time in being, at being in Cecilia's house, I felt very out of place. I didn't know what to do. This was a whole new ball game, new territory, I kind of needed to figure out where my feet are, so in doing that I wasn't really thinking about trying to initiate any kind of conversation or interaction with anybody else because my thoughts were too busy trying to figure out what's going on, um, but like all kids do with me, they immediately run up to me and they just want my attention the entire time. He didn't want to know anybody else. He just wanted to be around me. And so much so that Cecilia even started saying that he's got a crush on me and I'm his girlfriend. And she would do that in front of him to embarrass him. I played along because I didn't want him, I didn't want little Andres to feel bad. I mean, Cecilia already made this little boy feel like nothing. She already took his self-worth and squashed it through the ground, shattered it completely every single day. So when she used to tease him about me, I didn't want to give any, even just awkward looks or stares or anything of the sort that would, you know, make him feel any worse about himself. And also, at the same time, so what? If he does actually have a crush on me, 
he's he's a kid, you know, he's a little boy, like, okay, big deal, you know, he's fond of me, but, um, he was, he was an awesome little boy, I adored him completely, and then little Louisa, in the beginning with knowing Cecilia, I didn't even know she had a daughter, until maybe by the second or third week of knowing Cecilia, I had mentioned, I, I had heard the name Louisa a few times, or an indirect re reference to a baby, but I didn't exactly know what was going on or who this was, and I didn't feel like it was appropriate for me to ask, because I was still so new to, you know, being in Cecilia's life, and the things that were being discussed seemed quite, um, dramatic, but that's not even the right word. The scenario basically at that point was there was a husband and a wife that had been in Ria's ministry team that had been looking after little Louisa because on because apparently Cecilia wasn't capable of looking after her and then on high days Cecilia would be attacked and when she was alone she'd be attacked so it was not safe for little Louisa to be there because she was only a baby and she was also uh, a premature baby. But then came the scenario where this couple, if I p put the puzzle pieces together, this couple obviously realized that Cecilia was a fraud, was a phony. They started realizing the truth of some things. And they wanted to save this little girl away from Cecilia. And I suppose they they deemed it within themselves that since they had been looking after her constantly for probably months on end, uh, without Cecilia being around, that they wanted to adopt this little girl. And uh, they wanted to take little Louisa away from Cecilia. So this war began. began. And Cecilia started to fight for her daughter to get her back. I don't know all the ins and outs of uh, how Cecilia got her back. But little Louisa eventually did end up back with Cecilia. And this couple was completely eradicated from the picture. And at this point, dare I even ask if this couple is actually still alive. But... Um, Little Louisa was the tiniest little girl I'd ever seen. She was so fragile, uh, so thin, with this very fair blonde hair, fair skin. She was the cutest little thing. But uh, Cecilia didn't know how to look after her. She didn't even want to look after her. I think she only fought for her daughter because... You know, she was basically a possession. She belongs to me, so I'm going to take her back. Not because she actually wanted Cecilia, but... Ach, not because Cecilia actually wanted Louisa, but because it was something... You know, she didn't want someone to take something away from her. And, uh... She, she basically fought for Louisa like an object, if you want to put it so bluntly. And uh, most of the time, Cecilia's husband would look after little Louisa. But when he would have to go to work, Cecilia was then faced with looking after Louisa, which was quite a difficult and challenging scenario to watch. Because Cecilia didn't know what to do, and she didn't want to, in all honesty, look after her daughter. But as time went on, she started to form a bond with her daughter, and she spent more time with her, but she was also, Cecilia was definitely, I would say definitely reckless with her. There were times where I would, it would make me paranoid that Cecilia would be alone with her daughter in case something happens or her daughter gets hold of something, because Cecilia honestly did not care. She did not, she was not concerned about watching her daughter. She was not concerned about anything her daughter got hold of. Even if she was watching it in front of her, 
Cecilia would do nothing. There was one scenario where I was with Cecilia and little Louisa. We were watching TV and little Louisa gets hold of Cecilia's uh, pocket knife. It was just lying randomly on the bedside table and little Louisa begins to play with it. As soon as I saw it, I freaked out and I grabbed it from Louisa because the knife was already open and it was exceptionally sharp. And Louisa was merely one, two years old maximum at that stage. And when Cecilia saw me grab the knife away from Louisa, Cecilia gave me this ridiculing look. And she said to me, well, she also laughed at me. And she mocked me, she said, why are you so paranoid? And I, you know, I explained to her, but you know, your daughter's going to get hurt. She's going to hurt herself. She's got a knife. Pure, simple logic, yeah. You know, and then I said to her, well, you know, aren't you concerned? You know, why didn't you take it away? You actually saw she had it. And Cecilia just shrugged her shoulders and said, said to me, no, Louisa would have been fine. Cecilia actually said Louisa would have been fine. Louisa would have been fine playing with a very sharp pocket knife at one, maximum two years old. I could not and still cannot comprehend the logic in that thought. Um, even though Cecilia took to her daughter more than she ever did her son, she was exceptionally reckless with her daughter. Um... In a nutshell, I, I felt very, very bad for those kids. I mean, Cecilia had a habit of giving her daughter a present. Or she would go out to the shops and buy her daughter or something. Even if it was just a sweet. And not get her son anything. It was always like that. He was never given anything. It was always the daughter. There was extreme favoritism. And no matter how hard her son tried... She always tossed him aside. And I eventually started, you know, insisting that, you know, when Cecilia wanted to buy something for her daughter, I would insist buying and then in insist that we get one for her son too. Because it was completely unfair that this poor little boy was suffering even more. Now with even more rejection and he's going to start resenting his sister, who he absolutely adored. He adored his little sister. He was so protective over her. And I didn't want that bond to be broken or disrupted or affected in any way because of Cecilia. And uh, the, Cecilia also had a habit of when she would buy something for little Andres. There was a scenario where she got him a cat, a kitten. And she let him have it for one or two weeks maximum. She let him bond with this kitten. And then she took it away from him. And she had a habit of doing this regularly. She would let him get close to something and then take it away. And Cecilia actually explained to me at one point that that's what they do in the occult. When kids get to a certain age, they get given a very young animal. They allow the child to bond with this animal. And then this animal gets brutally ripped away from them. And it's supposed to build strength and character and... All the nonsense reasoning that would go along with it. It was a very, very devastating and very... Uh, it was just wrong. And uh, then there was a time where <laughs> little Andres was in his bedroom and Cecilia and I were in her bedroom. We were talking and next minute we heard this mass amount of glass just shattering. And surprisingly Cecilia actually jumped up to go see what it was. And what had happened was, is her son decided to jump. He was jumping on his bed and then he jumped onto his side tables which were completely glass. And it had shattered. Cecilia did not stop to check once if he was okay. 
she just went off at him that he had broken the glass, and again ridiculing him and breaking him. Not once to even physically check if he had been cut. Not once to check for anything. She wasn't concerned about him. She was concerned about the manager. There were so many incidences like this that I could not for the life of me understand. Objects were more important than her son. Um, and for so many years after I left Cecilia, I, I wondered how those two kids were doing, if they were still okay. I mean, as little Louisa grew up, Cecilia used to teach her daughter to eat out of a bowl like a dog. On all four legs, to eat like a, a dog out of a bowl. And then she would teach her daughter to howl because she taught her daughter that she was a wolf because that was their bloodline and their lineage because of the occult. Cecilia was a wolf and a werewolf and so was her daughter. So she reasoned that her daughter needed to learn wolf traits and so began her teachings of teaching little Louisa to be on all fours to pant like a dog or like a wolf with her tongue out, to howl and to do everything like a wolf would, to sniff around, to sniff things. It was ridiculous. She looked like she was training an animal. And this carried on up until even when I had left. It was still going on. This little girl honestly believed that she was part wolf. Um, yeah, I, I worried about these two kids from all the years after I'd left. 